Welcome back. We're going to do a uh, video on the ZV30, on my ZV30. I, I would like to say that for our video purposes, I don't do videos on specific weapons like I'm all knowledgeable. I don't do, well, this is a ZV30 developed and blah, 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 by so and so and so in this country, and went to that country. No. I'm just going to give you, try to give you a hands on a video on the weapons that either I have or have access to, in this case I have. This is a ZB-30 I got from Century Arms as a post sample import years ago. When the gun came in, as with uh, Century in those days, you could get a really nice gun or you could get a really shitty gun. In this case I got a really shitty gun. When the gun came in, it had this barrel on it and a different lower. The lower had no butt stock, it was cracked, it's all rusty, uh, the op rod is all rusty, so I bought a part set. And using the barrel from the part set and the lower from the part set, I was able to make a, a good running gun, which has served me well for many years. Um, what's particular about this ZB30 is, um, I believe this is a Turkish import gun. I will show in a few minutes we'll zoom in and I'll show you the markings on the side. It is obviously a checkmate ZB30 but I believe it served with the Turkish. It has a uh, crescent moon um, symbol. Like uh, all ZB30s it has a standard dial sight and quick change barrel which I will show you when we zoom in. Um, and then what I'm also going to show you which is uh, not actually that common is when the 26s and 20 and 30s were sent to Spain, uh, the Spanish came up with a tripod, and I happen to have one. So, after we've done showing it to you, we're going to shoot it from the ground, and we're going to shoot it from the tripod. So, if I can get my camera guy to move in here, uh, we'll go to show you some close-ups. All right, we'll show you the engraving on the side of the gun. Here you can see CAP 7.9 millimeter. I don't know why it doesn't say CAL. I don't know if CAP is Czech or Turkish or whatever. And below it you can see the year that the gun was made. In this case, 1936. Over here, there is the, what I believe is the Turkish crest, the serial number, and the Bruno stamp. Here, let me get this on the end of the table here. You can see the brown, I don't know if this is Czech, model ZB30. And then finally, right up here, is the import mark from Century Arms International. And while, you, while we're on this side, you get a nice look at the dial sight on the gun. And here's the other what the barrel release latch looks like from the other side. All right. I think that's all we can show you mark wise. All right, what we're going to do is we'll show you real quickly the, the quick change barrel feature. Obviously the barrel's fin for cooling. And uh, I'm going to show you a close up later. Each one of these barrels I have is actually different. The gas adjustments are different in the barrels, but you'll notice that when we uh, do the barrel change they'll both go on the gun and they both run on the gun so here's your barrel this right here is your barrel change lever it's recessed so it can't be bumped so the yeah, standard this is just use a this is a 762 round but any round will work is to stick it in there now what I do and I don't have a manual for this it's just the way I've gotten into doing barrel changes on whether it's my Ultimax or this or my Mag 58 or whatever. I like to do the barrel change with the bolt back. I don't know why. I just feel safer that way. Obviously no magazine in it. Push in that little lever and it will unlock and that will allow this to come up. This comes off the front. There's another barrel, goes in, now let's make sure I got it lined up, barrel 
parts changed. That's how easy this is. Um, so if you're running a two-man team with spare barrels, your gun gets hot, push the button, assistant gunner takes this off, throws a new barrel on, you're back in the game. Now, uh, that's all we're going to show you on the gun. I'm gonna, we're going to do a couple zoom-ins here on the barrel, and then we're going to get the tripod out and show you how the tripod mounts the gun. So, All right, I got both barrels. This is the one that came with the gun. This is the one that came with the parts set. This is the one that I primarily use. As you can see, this one's blue, and this one appears to be some kind of nickel steel. Again, different kind of um, construction. Now, if you come up here, I'll slide these down. And maybe we can zoom in here. If you look at these two gas blocks, they're different. This one's wide, this one's short. Both of them have what this is, this little piece right here. So when you push the barrel into the gun and lock the gun in, the piece that this slides into pushes this forward and allows this not to lock. If you need to change the gas system, you push this out, when it's out, this unscrews, and it also allows the gas system to rotate. The key thing is this gas system, this gas ring goes down in here. That's why this is so long. This gas system is flat. This, this adjustment is here. I've had trouble with this one leaking. If you look on here, you can see there's like a little light gas, gasket material or something. And I found that that will last, you know, 500 or so rounds and then it blows off. And this one just doesn't want to run properly. This one just runs and runs and runs. Um, but the... I'll take this one apart, you push this back, this just unscrews. And then this comes out, and this is your gas adjustment. And if you can see here, they're actually numbered. I believe this one was on four right here. Now this one, when you push it back, it's not going to move because I've got that gasket material on there to hold it up. So that one's not going to come apart. So, but I wanted you to see the difference. There are different kinds of barrels. Now, the other thing is, because of the way the part sets came in, I believe that this part set might have been a Yugoslavian part set. I don't know. This one is obviously from the Turkish gun because it came with the Turkish gun. I don't know if this was changed as part of the ZB-30s or if the change from the 26 to the 30. I don't know what era barrels I have here. All I can tell you is this came in with a Yugoslavian ZB-30 parts kit this came in with the gun which was marked ZB-30 so I'm assuming it's just two different variants of the same gun of the ZB-30 they both fit and function on my ZB-30 um, when we take it to the range we'll probably shoot it with this one in place alrighty I'm going to show you the tripod this is the Spanish tripod my understanding as I said I'm, I'm not a historian or not as big an historian as other people. This was developed during the Spanish Civil War because the ZB-26s and the ZB-30s that they bought from the Czechs didn't have a tripod. How this works is the ZB sits in here and this actually clamps and we'll put the gun on it to show you how it holds it and that tightens up. It actually works pretty well, I was surprised. And if you look at this tripod and as primitive as it is, you think, oh, it doesn't have much of, for anything. It probably doesn't have a T and E, and it actually does have a T and E. First of all, I'm going to stand it up a little bit so you can get a little better picture of it is graduated. And this lever does allow you to lock it in place for fixed fire. Put it back down. For elevation, you have this knob. 
when you get to the correct elevation, tighten this up, it locks it in place. So you could actually do fixed fire like a heavy machine gun with a ZB30. Now granted you only have a 20 round magazine, but it's actually a pretty effective little tripod. Um, when we get it to the range, I have actually not fired it from the tripod. When we get it to the range, when we fire from the tripod for this video, will be the first time I've done that. Alright, we're going to take a picture from a little different angle, and I'm going to install right. the gun. I'm going to mount this in here. Where it mounts to is right here. There is a groove, or a ridge that corresponds to the grooves on the back of the tripod, or in those little latches. This goes in, into the groove, and then you tighten this up. You have to hold the gun up to get the uh, ridge on the other side to line up. Now once we get it lined up, we will get a close-up of it in the gun. Alright, it's tight. So, here I got my ZB-30. I'm in the Spanish Army. The uh, fascists are coming up over the hill. I need to depress the fire. I can unlock my gun. Crank it up. Now, I can either use the knob, or as you can see, I can readily do this. And then when I get to where I need to be, lock it back in. Same thing with this. I can move it freely, figure out my field of fire, lock it in. Now, I'm acting as a heavy machine gunner. I'm the machine gunner back here. My assistant gunner is slapping mags in, and with it in this setup, I don't know if you can see it, but I can still get to the barrel release mechanism. I can still quick change out the barrel. Um, so this is actually a very well shot, thought out tripod for how, considering the country to design this, didn't design the weapon. Um, if you're interested, and you have a 26 or a 30, even a semi-automatic one, and you want one of these tripods, I got this from uh, Gun Parts Corporation. I, they had some at the last creek. I don't know if they had any. I should take note, uh, when you buy one, check it, because I had to send four back for broken parts, but I finally got a good one, and I'm really happy with it. I think it makes the gun look totally awesome, and it's a neat, it's a neat uh, accessory. All right, we'll take some close-ups of the tripod, and then after that, it's going to be on the range running some bullets. I'm going to try to give you a little close-up. I'm going to move the gun around. We'll, we'll leave the camera where it's at. If you can see here, the ridge on the gun is up into the slot on the, on the latch. Here is my uh, barrel release. So, as I said, it's just a bullet and I can push it in. All right. The gun is actually in there pretty tight. Um, I'm hoping that you can see how it sits in the cradle. So, next thing to do is to take this baby out and run some bullets through it. And that's the fun part of the video. All right, we're going to try running some bullets through this. One of the things I forgot to mention in an earlier video is these legs do extend. And since I'm old and kind of fat, not kind of, just fat, I'm going to extend it so I get, a, get the guns a little bit more off the ground. We're going to try running the gun on semi, and then we'll run a switch it over to full auto. Push in and tilt back. I'm sorry, lower the front and then you just rock it in backwards. All right. Much better on a higher tripod. All right, let's try some semi here. Semi's okay. It's not very much fun. 
so we'll burst off the end of the mag. Mag's empty. Bolt lock's open on the last shot. Now, if I have good mags and good ammo, and a good loader, which isn't me, I could just keep feeding this thing over and over and over. Now let's try a whole mag dump. Oh, I destroyed my target. Mag's empty. Gun's locked open. We're going to put it up on a tripod for you and show you what that looks like. Okay. I'm going to set this thing up. And what I'm going to do is I'll just manually get it close and then I'm going to lock it in and see if it holds its position. I'm going to do one mag bursted and the other mag will be a whole mag dump, assuming they run that long. As I said in the video, you got to find a slot and then you crank in the handle. Now we just finished filming the part with the bipod. So the gun's actually a little warm because it's a nice warm hot day today and with a humidity of 7,000. So the old fat guy's sweating his butt off. I'm going to unlock it. It. Now, I'm not gonna, I might even lock it left to right. How do you like my scientific sighting? We're gonna lock it left to right. So, in theory, this is pretty close to locked in. Now, you can see there is some wobble just because of nature, it's just a clamp. But not much. All right, I got two mags. Earlier in the bipod, I think you could hear the gun speed up and slow down. That's what happens when you use ammunition that's made 1960. Front of the mag goes in, tilt back. I'm gonna stand back here, or kneel back here, so you can see the gun run. way low so I'm gonna unlock it raise it up a little bit relock it try it again you would not believe how much easier this is than laying an old fat guy on the ground try it again a whole mag. Hand off to show you. It doesn't move. It's a great little tripod. If you have one of these or a semi, I would recommend trying to get one. All right. Again, thanks to Ultra for uh, sponsoring this and letting me have some of their eight millimeter. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.